Okay, today the uh, perfect square is going to talk to you about uh, graphing and uh, lines. And before we get into that, we need to talk about the Cartesian coordinate system. And in order to do that, uh, we're going to need to look at the grid that's called the Cartesian or the rectangular coordinate system. Now this grid is actually uh, consists of a horizontal axis called the x-axis and a vertical axis called the y-axis and each point in the system is represented by a set of ordered pairs and so the first value of the ordered pair represents the x value and the second value represents the y value and these uh, two axes divide the plane into four quadrants so so if you look at um, let me make this a little smaller for you. If you look at uh, this particular Cartesian coordinate system here, uh, on this side, we call this quadrant 1. And then it goes counterclockwise. Over here, where the x is negative and the y is positive, this is quadrant 2. And then where both the x values and the y values are, are negative, we call this quadrant 3. And then quadrant 4 is the quadrant that's over here. Now, if you wanted to uh, plot points on this system, first thing you have to realize is where the x, this is the x-axis, and this is the y-axis and where the x-axis and the y-axis intersect here that's actually called the uh, origin and it's the point zero zero now if you wanted to plot some points like let's say you wanted to plot the point two comma three well you would just go to the right two so you go two at two uh, units to the right on the x-axis then you go up three units and that's how you would plot the point 2, 3. Now, if you wanted to plot the point uh, 3, negative 3 down here, what you would do, since the uh, x value is 3, you, you would go right 1, 2, 3, and then you would go down uh, negative 3. So you go down 1, 2, 3. So when the uh, x value is positive, you go to the right. When the x value is negative, you go to the left. When the y value is positive, you move upward. And when the y value is negative, you move downward. So let's look at a couple more. Let's say I wanted to plot the point negative 4, negative 1. Well, I would go 1, 2, 3, 4 to the left, and then go down 1, and that would give me the point negative 4, negative 1. And then one more point here, if I go 1 to the left and up 2, that would give me the point negative 1, 2. Now, if you want to do plot a point that's on the uh, x-axis, well, it would, since it doesn't go up or down, the y value would be 0. So let's say you wanted to plot the point negative 3, 0. Then you would just go 3 units to the left, on the, stay on the x-axis. But then on the other hand, if you wanted to plot the point 0, 2, then that would mean you're going to be on the y-axis. So you would just go up 2 units. So this would be 0, 2, and this would be negative 3, 0. And so you can see that if a point is on the x-axis, then the y-value is 0. And if a point's on the y-axis, then the x-value is 0. Now, I, I used integer values here, but obviously you could have other points. Uh, you could have other points here, like you could have the point negative 0.5 and 1.7. In that case, you'd have to just kind of estimate it. Negative 5 would be, say, about right here and then go up 1.7 would probably be about right right there. So you, you'd have to estimate it. Uh, let's say, suppose you had a weird number like pi for the x value and 2 for the y value. Well, pi is about 3.1, so you go just past 3, and then you could go up 2, and so the, the point pi comma 2 would be there. And you could have some other uh, weird values for the x and y values. But uh, when we get started, we generally just uh, use integer values to plot, maybe some fractional values. Now, I'm going to want to talk about the distance between two points in the Cartesian coordinate system. But in order to do that, 
uh, I want to talk to you about the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem basically says if you have a right triangle, like right here I have a right triangle, and let's say this is the right angle right there, then the legs can be represented by the letters A and B, and the hypotenuse, the side opposite the, the uh, right angle, is called C. Well, it turns out that in a right triangle, the uh, relationship always satisfies this formula. A squared plus B squared equals C squared, or moreover, that C is equal to the square root of A squared plus B squared. So, to uh, illustrate uh, this, uh, excuse me, to illustrate this problem, I'm going to um, actually give you a right triangle that has one leg is six units long, the other leg is nine units long, and I'm going to let x represent the hypotenuse, and we're going to find the hypotenuse. Well, since we know that a squared plus b squared must equal c squared, where a and b are the legs and c is the hypotenuse, then we know that six squared plus nine squared, six squared plus nine squared must equal x squared. Well, 6 squared plus 9 squared is 36 plus 81. So x squared must equal 36 plus 81, or 117. Well, if x squared equals 117, then x has to be the square root of 117. And uh, approximately, that's approximately 10.82 units. Uh, we haven't talked about radicals yet, but you actually can simplify this uh, in radical form by breaking 117 up into 9 times 13 and taking the square root of 9 out of the radical and get 3 times the square root of 13. This is actually called the exact answer and 10.82 is an approximation. Here's another one. Um, this time I'm, mi I'm missing the leg. So I know the hypotenuse is 10 and I know one leg is 4 but I need the other leg. Well using this formula then we could say 4 squared plus 8 squared equals 10 squared. So that would tell me that 16 plus x squared equals 100. So I can easily solve for x squared by subtracting 16. So I get x squared equals 84. And then if x squared equals 84, then x would be the square root of 84, which is approximately 9.17. But again, if you wrote that 84 as 4 times 21, you can take the square root of 4 outside the radical and get the exact answer, 2 times the square root of 21. Now, the reason this, this Pythagorean theorem shows up in this system is simply because, so it's simply because if you wanted to find the distance between two points in this Cartesian coordinate system, say you wanted to find the distance between 0, 2, and the point 2, 3, well, you can notice that the distance between the two points, this line here, is actually the hypotenuse of a right triangle. So I won't go into the details of how this comes about, but, but basically the formula is derived from the Pythagorean theorem. So the formula for finding the distance between two points, let's say you know that one point is x1, y1, and another point is x2, y2, and you want to find the distance between them in the Cartesian coordinate system then you can use this formula. Let d represent distance, then the d is equal to the square root of the difference of the x value squared plus the difference of the y value squared. And so you can apply that formula. Let me show you an example. Suppose we want to find the distance between the points 3, negative 5 and the points 4, 7. Well, applying this formula, I would take the x value 4 and subtract the x value 3 and then square it but then also on the inside of the radical I would have the x the y value 7 minus the y value negative 5 and and that would actually be the same as 7 plus 5 so what I would have here this would be 1 squared and this would actually be 12 squared and so I would have uh, 1 squared plus 12 squared and that would equal the square root of 145. And you could actually use a calculator to approximate that. Okay, here's another example. Let's suppose I, I have some numbers that aren't integers. 
like this point's at negative 1.2 and the y value is 3.5 and then there's another point where x is 2.7 and y is negative 1.3 so let's find the distance between those points well again I would take I would take the square root of the quantity 2.7 minus negative 1.2 squared plus the difference of the y values, negative 1.3 minus 3.5 quantity squared. Well, that would be neg that would be 2.7 plus 1.2, so that'd be 3.9 squared. And then this would be negative 4.8 quantity squared. And then when you get a calculator and do 3.9 squared plus 4 negative 4.8 squared, you actually get 38.25. So again, you could uh, plug this in your calculator to see what it equals. Okay, so one other thing that you might do um, that you might do is we might give you three points and ask that you show whether or not these three points form a right triangle. Well, what you would do if you wanted to do that, you would just want to see if the distance between the three points satisfies the Pythagorean theorem. So let's find the distance from A to B then the distance from A to C, then the distance from B to C. And so I'm going to apply the, uh, the I'm going to apply the distance formula. So from A to B, seven minus three squared, four minus one squared. So I would have uh, so actually I would have uh, seven four minus one squared is three squared, and then seven minus three that would be four squared, and then so I'd have the square root of twenty five, which is five. Now from A to C, that would be this one, so I would have negative 1 minus 1 squared, so that would be negative 2 squared, and then 5 minus 3 squared, that would be 2 squared, so I'd have the square root of 4 plus 4, which is square root of 8. And then if I want to know the distance from B to C, I would have, I could go negative 1 minus 4, so that would be negative 5 squared, and then 5 minus 7, and that would give me negative 2 squared and all that goes in the square root, so I'd have the square root of 29. Well, in order for this to be, in order for these points to be a right triangle, these three distances have to satisfy the uh, Pythagorean theorem. So if you take the two shorter distances, 5 and 8, and sum their squares, 5 and square root of 8 and sum their squares, then you actually get 25 plus 8, which is 33, and that doesn't equal the square of the third side. So since the uh, Pythagorean theorem is not satisfied here, then these points cannot be vertices of a right triangle. Here's an application of the Pythagorean theorem. So pause the video here and read these, and you'll see that they're, they're pretty straightforward. Uh, I just want to finish this video on the midpoint and show you the midpoint formula. So this, this gives you the midpoint between two points on the Cartesian coordinate system. And so let me just show you a couple of examples. If you uh, want to find the midpoint between these two points, you would just add, add the x values and divide by 2, then add the y values and divide by 2, and you would get 7 halves and negative 12 over 2 is negative 6. So the midpoint would be 7 halves and negative 6. And then here I did the same thing, add 1 and negative 3, and you get uh, negative 2 divided by 2 gives you negative 1, and then 0 plus 8 divided by 2 gives you 4. So the midpoint between these two points would be the point negative 1, 4. And then uh, lastly, pause the video and then read uh, this application, and you'll see that all I did here was to find the midpoint, I had the point for 2,000 and 500,000, and then in 2008 it was 800,000. So the midpoint, I found the midpoint between 2,000 and 2,008, which is 2,004, and then I found the midpoint between 500,000 and 800,000, which is 650,000, and so the answer to this question was 650,000. And so again, if you read the problem, it makes more sense, so pause the video if you need to. So the next section, I'm going to talk to you about linear equations.